Hey guys, it's Rob. I just wanted to do a video on uh, custom mixers, center of gravity position as it relates to a VTAL because they're a bit of a unique case. Um, with our normal quadcopter, what we would normally do is we'd place the center of gravity exactly halfway between the front and the rear motors. Okay, and what that's going to do is it's going to result in all four motors operating equally in a hover. With a VTAL, that's not going to work because as you can see, the, uh, the V in this case it's 30 degrees, means the thrust line of these motors is not actually in the vertical. And uh, with 30 degrees, you're actually only getting about 86% of this thrust being applied in the vertical sense. So essentially, if you were to put the center of gravity at the midpoint between rear and front motors, the rear is not going to be able to develop enough power to, to balance the front. So that's, uh, that's one problem. What I see uh, quite often with VTALs, um, this particular frame, it's also able to be built as a tricopter and uh, the front arms and the rear boom here, they're the same length. So if we had a third motor in the middle, that would be fine because you've got one, two, three motors all developing equal thrust. The center of gravity could be right here in the middle of the flight controller and that would be perfect for a tricopter. But um, it's not ideal either for um, a VTAL in this particular frame because now we have two motors. And as I said, we've got 86% thrust, but 86% of two motors is still giving you more thrust through this point than a single motor would. So, how do they fix it? There's a couple of different ways. Um, what I've noticed is that uh, some custom mixes are based on the position of the flight controller. And if the center of gravity is at this flight controller, you can make it fly, and you can make it fly quite well by um, creating a custom mix that reduces the amount of power coming out of the rear motors. Okay, now that's going to compensate for having two motors on the back and the center of gravity in this position. That'll work fine. The problem is, by reducing the power available, you're never going to have 100% thrust on all four motors, which is obviously what's going to give you the best vertical climb performance. So the best way and the optimum way to get maximum performance out of a VTAL is to calculate the center of gravity accurately based on all four motors operating at maximum thrust. So the front motors and the rear motors at 100% thrust. Because of the V and 86% of that thrust is in the vertical, it's a little mathematical calculation that brings the center of gravity just slightly forward of the halfway point. So it's actually not halfway between the front and the rear propellers, it's just slightly forward but it is still rearward of the flight controller. In fact, on this frame, it's just about there, okay? So once you calculate the center of thrust, this is what we call the true center of thrust with all motors act, acting at the same thrust value, um, that's the point from where the custom mix should be applied. And if you do that, you can actually set maximum power for all four motors. So um, in a, a full power climb, you've got all motors operating at 100%, and they're all acting through the center of thrust. And if that's where you put the center of gravity of your machine, it's just going to fly beautifully. One thing, um, people that own VTALs, and I've experienced this, uh, notice something uh, they call a growl on a vertical climb. Now what that growl is caused by is a misbalance of the custom mix and the center of gravity position. Just, just follow me through with this one. If our center of gravity was too far forward and we're developing full throttle on all motors, what that's going to do is it would cause the um, VTAL, it would cause it to pitch forward like that. There's too much thrust coming from the rear if the center of gravity is forward here, okay? So what the flight controller does, it'll pick up that tendency for it to pitch forward and it will compensate. It'll compensate by reducing power on the rear. And what's going to happen is you'll get a very, very slight and very rapid oscillation as it's climbing, as it's continually applying and reducing power on the rear motors to keep that quad level, okay? Because the center of thrust is acting rear of the center of gravity. So you've got like a couple that is causing the, um, the quadcopter to pitch forward like that. Center of thrust here, center of gravity there, it's a couple. So the flight controller is constantly adjusting, maybe many, many times a second, the, uh, the output on the rear motors to keep that level when the two uh, don't coincide. What I noticed on this particular frame is when I come down from a flight, the front ECs would be cool, and 
the rear ESCs would be actually quite hot. Now, I originally put that down to a bit of prop flow, and that's probably still a factor. But what, um, what's also causing it is that constant correction by the flight controller to the rear motors is making these rear ESCs work a lot harder. So when I recalculated, did the numbers, created a new custom mix, I've now got my center of gravity here at the true center of thrust. I've got the custom mix set accordingly, so all motors can produce 100% power, and the center of gravity and the center of thrust coincide. What that means is in a full power climb, it just goes up. There's none of that oscillation which causes the growling sound. And because it's just going up and there's no constant rapid corrections on the rear ESCs, they fly a lot cooler. And that's been my experience too, that these ESCs stay quite cool now um, when I'm flying, even when I'm pushing it hard. So the basic thing is with uh, a VTAIL, calculate the center of thrust, calculate your custom mix based on that center of thrust position, and then adjust your battery to ensure that the quad balances at that center of thrust and the center of gravity uh, coincides. Thanks for watching.